Hello once again YouTube and welcome back to The Domain. Today is a very special day for me and my buddy Kellen, who's right next to me. Say hello. Woo! <laughs> yeah, Kellen's been in quite a few videos and as of yesterday, I now occupy the same house as him. Why did I say it like that? Live. <laughs> Live. <laughs> That was the weirdest way of saying that I live with someone. Yeah, um, I'm gonna be in an apartment with Callum for the next three or four months and I will be showing it off in great depth in the future. This is an interesting first video to film in this house because it doesn't show off anything but this black table. But either way, today we're looking at the Tavares, Master Chief and Hyperius three pack, which, you know, I, on the base of it, I got quite a few things to say. Kellen's just staring at me right now. I've never actually recorded a video like this in front of friends, so it's pretty interesting. I got a lot to say about this set. I think it's mostly good. There's so many new molds. There's so much good high detail paint applications. There are a couple of weird things. I'm looking at you, Hyperius. I think this, this monkey just has the exact same Craig face as the basic brutes, which I wouldn't be that happy with, but this Tavares does look excellent. So we're going to break this open today. First of all, we'll have a look at the back. It's, uh, it's pretty basic. We've just got our figure count, but on a lot of these sets, it's just a plain green background, or it has the Master Chief running. Like, this is pretty good to show off the, uh, the range of figures, the line of figures. In the individual, I believe this is wave three of the World of Halo collection. We got Spartan EOD, Master Chief with Commander Rifle and Grapple Shot, Jackal Raider, Elite Mercenary, Hyperius, and Spartan Cavalino. We still have not seen the Spartan Cavalino even in the game, so I don't know what that's all about. And this Jackal Raider is also called, um, Jackal Freebooter in the Mega Constructs toys, so I don't know which is the official canon name. Maybe they're all just kind of of guessing. The Elite Mercenary, though, I really want to get this one. It looks fantastic, and it's very well mirrored off the original Combat Evolved design. Then we got Master Chief against Tavares, which is odd, because we have Master Chief against Tavares in this pack, except Master Chief is AC, and we have a UNSC Marine versus Jackal Raider uh, blue version. So pretty dope that they have two different colors of Jackal that you can collect, and then the Gungoose and the Shade Turret are absolute musts. Let's break this open. Kellen, what do you think about this on the face of things? I really like the AC. I think the AC is a pretty cool thing. Yeah. I didn't know what that was until we went to Target that day and you bought this pack and I remember how excited you were that it was Master Chief AC. And uh, yeah, I think the active camo is a pretty cool little uh, addition to this pack. It is. Also, what is that noise? Is that the radiator? It's the refrigerator. <laughs> Sorry if there's any background noise. Um, I'm only gonna apologize a little bit because I've, I moved into this apartment like 12 hours ago, so. <laughs> wow, they just shot out. Three base plates, really dope that they are all different. You know, I'm not the biggest fan of these base plates just because they're so small, but they do interlock together, which is pretty great. They've taken a page out of Mega Constructs book for sure. And you can create a little miniature diorama just from those three. All in all, a lot of detail, a lot of different colors, and very different, very varied terrain. I think these are a lot better than the individual packeted base plates. Right, which one are we gonna check out first, Kellen? Left, right, or middle? Left. Yeah, that's a good choice. This is Tavares. I guess one of the boss brutes in the game, though I've not come across this one yet. I've been playing the Halo Infinite campaign very, very slowly. I think a lot slower than most people. And this Tavares comes with his scrap cannon. Now, I came across this scrap cannon for the first time in game the other day. It's terrifying. Like, I was uh, hunting down a banished boss across the ring. I pulled up with my Marines on a Razorback, and I knew that the boss was over the other side of the cliff. And then the scrap Scrap cannon just started blasting across the map. It was it was pretty terrifying. I'm having a little bit of difficulty <laughs> opening his hands enough to actually grab this scrap cannon correctly. And look at that. Okay, oh, there we go. The helmet actually removes. That's nice. That's a really dope looking face, right? Like, that's a lot of detail. We've even got some scars running across his face. The yellow eyes are a bit odd. Like, I don't know if I like them per se. They're pretty good. And then the red goatee and big sort of mohawk is, uh, is, is pretty epic. He's a badass looking gorilla. And then we've got some red detailings across his armor. Then actually a lot of battle damage. These silver scratches. Jazzwear is actually pretty famous for this nowadays. They have really nice weathering on their characters and on their vehicles, actually. And the scrap cannon, I mean, goodness me, it's so large. I think Mega Constructs at this point needs to take a page out of Jazzwares' book where these guys are not afraid to make dozens and dozens of new molds. And it's, it's pretty good when you saw the packaging, they know how to make new molds and then replicate them across many different toys. This Tavares is really great. And that's, <laughs> I think that's a bit of a safety hazard for a kid. That is super sharp. We've also got a little 
indent hole there. That's nice. The whole thing is made up of a few different pieces, some solid and some soft plastic. So a lot of details gone into that. I'm uh, I'm very impressed. I'm always impressed with Jazzware. They're, they're doing a bang up job. And although these figures might not contain exactly the same amount of detail as a McFarlane figure, they are about two thirds of the price of a standard McFarlane figure. So I do get it. And also McFarlane never had this level of silver battle damage. I really like that a lot. So Tavares, a lot of new molding there. Really nice figure. We're going to get the other monkey out before we check out the Master Chief. And <laughs> he just, <laughs> he just slapped down on the table. I think he's dead. So this is Hyperius. I don't think I'm going to end up with as much positive stuff to say about Hyperius as I do Tavares. Because if we look under his helmet, it's just a Craig the Brute head. I mean, like, I get Craig was a meme at the time, but I think this looks stupid. Like, this doesn't look serious enough. This doesn't look menacing enough to be, like, one of the main bosses of Infinite. So, I don't know. And then his helmet... I I think he looks a bit stubby. I think he just looks a bit chunky, a little fat. I'm not totally impressed by Tavares. I'm not entirely impressed by Hyperius, and I didn't think I would be. From the first moment I saw the product image in, I just, I didn't think it was that good. I don't know if I'm missing something here, but that jetpack does not want to stay on. It looks very similar to the Mega Constructs design, this one, and I've been rocking that for years and years and years, so it's decent. It's decent. He also has a product uh, tag there, which is a bit jarring. Um, around the front, he's got more color colors than Tavares on average, and his helmet actually has a lot of application, including the banished logo on the top, so that is great. There's a theory out there um, that this is comprised of lots of dead Spartan's armor. So yes, we, we believe this might be Spartan Locke's helmet. This might be Sarah Palmer's helmet. We don't know, but I, I don't think it's likely. Clearly this is Locke's helmet, but I think it's more likely to just be a standard Hunter Spartan's helmet, because, you know, three foot three industries, they keep things close to their chest. They don't reveal anything through toys, really. There's been toy leaks that have revealed information early, but I don't think they'd put one of the main characters, one of the only, like, what, five playable characters in all of the Halo franchise? They would not kill him off screen, put his helmet on this guy's armor, and not even talk about it, and let it be revealed through toys. I just don't think they'd make that play. So we'll see what happens with the fate of Locke further down the Halo franchise. We also have this. I, I really don't know what that is, but it's clearly just strapped on. And yeah, we do have, I mean, this is confirmed, these are Spartan's fingers, like metal fingers from the Spartans, like as a necklace on his armor. So he's clearly a badass, but a badass would not have a face like this. <laughs> like, that's not menacing at all. If I came across him in the game and he legitimately looked like that, I'd I'd laugh, you know? Jazzware also, they have quite loose joints. Like, these are super loosey-goosey. And then he comes with the Ravager, which is a gun that I have not had much luck with in Halo Infinite. I can't use it very well. And I've seen people online, they take the classic approach of, you know, well, get good then, <laughs> you know? It's the Ravager and the Mangler. Like, people say, well, if you, if you can't, get good with the mangler. You need to play Halo more, which is also true. I don't have any time to play Halo. There we go. I'm leaving the camera on just in case it like snaps or anything. It's dramatic. <laughs> there we go. We got the Ravager in hand. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's basic. It does have some red highlights and especially these tiny little lights here are pretty nice. Even when you look at the lights on this, you can see that Jazzware level of detail because they're not just red. There's little scratches inside like it is like charging up energy that's about to be pulsed out. I don't know. The, the, the Hyperius, I could go either way, it has big pros, it has big cons. These legs are actually way, way, way too loose to be just taken straight out of new packaging. That's not very good. And I saw that the UNSC checkpoint set that Demarcation Media reviewed yesterday had some really bad quality control issues. So... I don't know. What do you think? Rate my monkeys out of 10 in the chat. I think I think they look pretty outstanding and there is a lot of painted detailing there. There are a lot of colors and battle damage available. Then we've got the pretty basic figure to review, the Master Chief. Oh, he's like uh, holstered in there. He wants to break free. Come on out, Master Chief. I want to break free. I'm gonna damage the figure now. I need to get some scissors. Out he comes. 
There's the Master Chief. This is actually the first World of Halo Master Chief I've got. I was living in Hong Kong for a long time, so I didn't purchase World of Halo. It was just too expensive to ship over to me. But now I'm in America, I will be sizing up a reasonable collection. Only some of the greatest hits. And I'm gonna make sure to not get any duplicate figures. So I won't be buying many of the two or three packs because most of them come with the Master Chief. And people complain that they all come with the Master Chief, but hey, folks need heroes, you know? They need someone to believe in, and that's the Master Chief. Any child that goes to a toy store wants the Master Chief, so I don't blame them. Especially the fact that Halo Infinite basically has no other Spartans in it, so Master Chief is the only marketable character now. But hey, he's a pretty good character at that. And this AC is way better than most ACs out there. Like, this is not just active camo, this is transferring active camo. This is either a Spartan with blue armor, or the Master Chief is like running past a lake or something. So the, the AC is like transferring through his body. Most figures that are produced by toy companies are just solid AC, and I think that's very lazy. This is much better. I say the same about things like the Mega Constructs Julem Dharma. I much, much, much prefer a like transferring AC, a really nice glassed over effect. He also holds his assault rifle very nicely. I mean, the Master Chief and the assault rifle, they are molded for each other, so I, I like that. And it is the Reach slash New Halo Infinite design on that rifle. So, uh, Kellen, how much would you say this retails for? What is this worth to you? $30. Exactly $30, yeah. This retail, wow. yeah, well done. That's why Jazzware is doing so well. They've brought down the cost of production on these figures. Usually you would pay uh, average $15 to $20 for Halo toys of this size in the past. We knew that the license was in good hands because Jazzware makes the Fortnite toys. Say what you want about Fortnite, they sell a lot of toys. So this is the Master Chief Hyperius and Tavares three pack and it is certified awesome <laughs> as he falls over. The Master Chief, uh, you can't say much about it because it is basic, but it follows the same molding as Halo. Halo Infinite, but it's this glassed over effect, which I absolutely love. Tavares stands out as one of the best Jazzware figures I've seen, and that scrap cannon is a beast. But then Hyperius, although the molding is pretty excellent and there is a lot of great detail, I think he does fall short with the, the chubbiness of him. I think he's way too fat. His legs are loose and uh, the Ravager is pretty basic. At the same time, Hyperius has way more color detailing than Tavares. So you tell me down in the chat, what do you think of these figures? Rate them out of 10 and let me know no, have you purchased these? Are you going to? Or have you just stayed away from the Jazzware license in general? Maybe all of your pocket money goes towards Mega Construct. I would not blame you. So this was another video with the domain, with Kellen as a, a very small feature. I think, Hello. You said, I think you said like three sentences, but that's good. We have just moved into this beautiful new apartment and I will be showing it you once it doesn't look like absolute trash. But there are two built-in display cabinets in the living room and I've already filled one with Halo. Much to Kellen's... Uh, I don't, know. <laughs> I don't know. He deals with it, you know? It's 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 part of the package. You adopt me, you adopt Halo. So you stay awesome, you stay safe, folks. And the scrap cannon is signing off. Boop, boop.